Hey guys, Brand New Productions here, and I'm just going to take the time that is allotted to me in this video in order to demonstrate uh, my new piece of software, well not really new, um, entitled Brandon's Timer 10. Now Brandon's Timer 10 is actually um, the final version of my first publicly released software, Brandon's Timer. Now Brandon's Timer 10's predecessor, Brandon's Timer 9, well, was it was okay, but it really lacked features that I wanted to see in the final product. Of course, at the time of creating Brennan's Timer 9, I did not know exactly how to create all these features that I really wanted. But um, now that I have the knowledge, I just stuff them all into Brennan's Timer 10. So Brennan's Timer 10 is actually um, written in VisualBasic.net, and it requires the .NET framework 2. Point, version 2.0. Um, it also requires several dependencies that are installed with the Brandon's Timer 10 package. But other than that, it is a very lightweight application uh, with a very stylish user interface. So let's go ahead and get started with the demonstration. So I'm just going to open up Brandon's Timer 10 and uh, drag the window over to the uh, center of the screen here. Now the first thing you'll notice about Brandon's Timer 10 is the user interface is vastly improved over its predecessor. We used a clean, silver, off Microsoft Office type palette for this application. And um, it makes everything really pop out and look nice. You'll also notice that now the application is relatively big. Whereas in its predecessor, uh, everything was packed into a very small amount of space. But in this version, uh, everything is kind of spread out with a lot of wiggle room. Um, the two main functions, the countdown and the stopwatch, are also, whoa, are also separated into their own tabs, and um, we've also got options in the about page here. So I'm just going to start from right to left here. Uh, the about page actually just states simple things about the uh, application. In this video, I will be using version 10.0.5, which is the latest private release. It will be publicly available by the time this video is uploaded to YouTube, however. The About window actually um, just states the main purpose of the uh, software and one rule that really applies. And that is a week is defined as 7 days, a month is defined as 30 days, and a year is dis defined as 365 days. Uh, this program does not account for months with 28 30 or 31 days and it does not account for leap years. It also does not account for a year actually being 365.25 days long. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into the functionality. Now Brennan's Timer 9 was actually completely housed around the stopwatch functionality. However, I've taken Brennan's, 10 to the, Brennan's Timer 10 to the next level and it actually houses countdown and stopwatch functionality together and they are completely independent of each other. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what this looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset this stopwatch here and then I'm going to go ahead and um, start the stopwatch. Now as you can see the timing immediately starts and it is perfectly reflected by the system's time. Unlike Brennan's Timer 9 where the time was reflected by uh, the program's rotations on its own thread which would slow the timer down if uh, one had a slower CPU. Um, Brandon's Timer 10 is completely, uh, or the uh, stopwatch and countdown functionality is completely derived from the system time. So the only reason the stopwatch or countdown functionality would be off is if your system time was off, which in this case you'd probably just need to replace the CMOS battery or something. But anyway, um, one of the major new additions to Brennan's Timer 10 is the um, lap counter here. So we can actually go ahead and press the lap button, and it will actually add uh, the current laps into this list box. Now the lap panel is closable and openable, and you can add laps um, while the panel is closed. So it makes for a nice, clean, sleek interface. So let's go ahead and um, stop our timer here. Now as you can see, you can stop and resume the timer. However, what I'm going to do is demonstrate a couple features of the lap panel. So in the lap panel, we can individually select each lap time. Now once we select a time, all we need to do is hover over it, and we can right click and get a number of options. We can actually go ahead and generally add the current time to the lap box, or we can specify a time to remove by hovering over it, right clicking, and press remove time. 
we can actually go ahead and right click on a specified time and press set time to selected value. Now this sets the current stopwatch to the selected value in the lap box and you can actually resume from there. So we're going to go ahead and stop the timer here, reset everything, minimize the lap panel here, and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the alarm feature as well. Now Brandon's timer 9 did have an alarm, however it has been uh, revamped in order to actually get the user's attention. Um, a lot of user feedback of Brandon's timer 9 said that the alarm simply wasn't uh, loud enough. So I went ahead and really amped it up. So I'm just going to set the alarm, oh, I'm just going to set the alarm to go off after 5 seconds and start the alarm. Now as you can see, there is a, um, I'm just going to wait for this to finish. So as you can see, there's a pretty long, um, annoying sound that plays when your alarm actually goes off, and this giant window actually pops up. Now, this that's very important, uh, because I really want to capture the user's attention with every alarm. Um, I know that if I set a stopwatch or a uh, or an alarm, I definitely want it to get my attention. So that has really been uh, amped up. Now, another feature of the of Brandon's Timer 10 is it's completely redesigned uh, save and load system. So we can actually go ahead and save all the details about this stopwatch record by simply clicking on the f this folder and clicking save stopwatch record. A little message box will appear telling us it's successful and then we can actually go ahead and reset everything. So then once we do that we are actually able to load our previous stopwatch record through this load window. So we select the stopwatch record that we want to load um, the one that I most recently saved at 5.57 p.m. It gives you the details about this stopwatch record and we can actually delete this stopwatch record. So I'm going to delete the one that I previously saved. Now we can select the most recently saved stopwatch record and we can analyze to make sure it is the stopwatch record we actually want to load. It is. And after we press load selected save, it loads everything back into the program down to the alarm that we set. So now, if we start the application, whoa! Hello. So the re yes. So the reason that the uh, that alarm went off was because we actually had our alarm set to alert us after five seconds. Now. Um, the stopwatch has far surpassed five seconds, so of course it immediately went off. But this is the main feature of the stopwatch uh, functionality in Brandon's Timer 10. The ability to save, load, and set alarms. So now let's focus on the countdown timer feature. Now the countdown timer, which runs co-independently of the stopwatch, um, we'll just have the stopwatch running in the background to demonstrate this, um, is actually something to you that is used to count down from a specified value. Now you can set this specified value by opening up the set value window. And once we do this, we can simply set a value. So I'm going to s demonstrate uh, the stopwatch functionality by counting down from 45 seconds. Now this sets the clock to 45 seconds and we can press start to actually start the countdown. And after the countdown is finished, an alarm will go off. This alarm is actually the exact same alarm that goes off during the stopwatch functionality. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press start here and as you can see, the countdown is immediately started. However, if we go into the stopwatch tab, you can see that the stopwatch has been running the whole time. And despite the fact that we started the countdown, the stopwatch is still running accurately. If we switch back to the countdown, we'll see that the amount of time that we have been staring at the stopwatch page has elapsed uh, without any slowdown or speed up. So I'm just going to stop the countdown here so that we don't get that uh, alarm going off again. And um, now I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the save and load functionality of the countdown. So I can actually save this countdown record and um, reset everything by setting all the values to zero by pressing the reset button. Then I can click on our little folder here and press load and it actually filters our results to only countdown, um, countdown save files. So this save file, which is actually a save file containing nothing, I can actually go ahead and delete this However, this save file with the time remaining of 19 seconds, 
and 542 milliseconds, saved at 5.59 p.m., is what we want to load. So we can go ahead and load this right in, and then if we start the countdown, it resumes from our previously saved state. So now that we've gone over the basic functionality of the program, we're going to take one final look at the options. So as you can see, the options panel is very concise, yet it has very useful features. So we can start Brandon's Timer 10 with Windows, start the stopwatch on application startup, and save time, times on exits. Now the main thought process behind this actual options panel, um, when I was first creating Brandon's Timer, my goal was to create a timer that would track how long the computer had been on for, uh, because it would intermittently shut down, and I wanted to diagnose the cause. However, I had no way of immediately saving the amount of time that the computer had been on for once it crashed. So, I created it at Brennan's Timer 9, which actually did this for me. However, the save functionality was uh, very sketchy and didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Two years later, or maybe it was about one year later, I've created Brennan's Timer 9, which has a very good save functionality, and it allows you to track how long your computer has been on and save that exact amount when you exit the application. This is very useful for tracking how long your computer has been on and um, keeping track of how much you use your computer in day-to-day -day tasks. So I'm just going to go ahead and save and submit these options, close the options panel, and this concludes my overview. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of Brennan's Timer 10. My regular content is scheduled for my next video, so please stay on the lookout for that. This has been Brandonia Productions. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later. If you wish to download Brandon's Timer 10, you can consult brandonsoft.com. However, Brandon's Timer 10 is currently in the beta stages. If you would like to download the publicly available version of the beta, you can visit the link in the description, which will lead you to a BP Forms thread. So thanks again for watching, and have a fantastic day.